Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of the Green Bean Podcast. My name is Katie Green and Jack is here, fast asleep on my lap. Um, hopefully he'll come and say hello at some point. I once again have to say thank you so much to everybody who's been watching the last few episodes of the podcast. Um, I'm so grateful for everybody who's leaving me nice comments and sharing the podcast around. I really appreciate it and I'm really glad that you're enjoying it because I'm enjoying making it and if this is the first episode that you've watched, welcome. I'm Katie. I'm an author and illustrator and seen as lots of people have been asking, Jack and I live in Devon which is in the southwest of England and all of the extra footage that you see in between the shots of the podcast is us on our daily walks and adventures around the countryside around here and it's really nice to hear that you're enjoying those as well. Um, In this episode I've got some new drawing to share with you and a new knitting project and a new sewing project and that's not to say that I am anywhere close to finishing most of the other projects that you've seen in previous episodes. I've just been changing up a bit, working on some different things and I thought it was time to share those with you. So I hope you enjoy and thank you so much for watching. starting a new drawing this evening which is going to be the back cover for the green bean zine. Um, For those of you who don't know I used to publish a fairly regular zine called the green bean. Um, I think I started it almost eight years ago and it ran for three or four years before I got too busy with working on my book and had to put a stop to it but I'm hoping to bring it back at some point in the future and I'm working on the first new issue at the moment. Um, All of the drawings that I've shared on the podcast so far have been in preparation for the new issue of The Green Bean and, you know, I don't want people to get overexcited. I don't think I'm going to be launching it in the next month or so. I think it's going to be a long, slow process, but I'm really enjoying getting back to drawing and getting back to making this this thing that I'm really proud of. I used to really love publishing my own magazine and I'm really excited about bringing it back however long it takes. So on the left of my drawing board you can see what is going to be the front cover and I'm going to start working on the back cover this evening. And I'm working on one of my favourite drawing surfaces which is Scratchboard. Um, and I love it because it is slow and detailed and tedious and all the things that I love to do. Um, it, if you've not used it before, it's a thin surface of china clay which is coated with a layer of Indian ink and you make marks by scratching with a sharp pointed tool um, which scratches away the black of the ink and leaves the white shining through. So I'm just going to test my tool on the side of the board and see if it's sharp enough and you can see hopefully I'm not sure how clear it will be on the camera but it leaves a nice white mark and I'm happy that this one is sharp enough to use. So I've sketched out roughly on the surface of the scratch board just with a a soft pencil, 4B pencil, roughly where I want the image to be and now I can start making my marks for the drawing. I guess I should be clear that just because I'm working on the back cover doesn't mean that I've 
finished all the pages that go in between the front cover and the back cover far from it this is um I guess I've probably done about one third of the pages that I want to include in the zine at this point I might as well be honest about how long it's taking how much time I'm spending on it um but you know I like to work on a page when I feel I come in the right mood to work on it and something else that's really important to me is changing up the processes that I'm using so I've just finished those couple of pages of the pencil drawing that you've seen me working on for the last couple of episodes and after working with pencil for a while I just felt like it's time for a change and time to bring the scratch board out however subtle it is it's a different movement with the hand and I find that really helps with repetitive strain injury and also with you know keeping the variety of what I'm doing it's nice to work on something that has a bit of a different feel and a different mood and maybe when I finish this I'll be looking forward to getting back to using my pencils again. You can see that I'm turning the page around as I draw on it and that's because the blade on these um, stylus tools is very directional, it's sharp in one particular direction and if I try to move it in the other direction it won't make as clean a mark. So at the moment this tool is making nice clean marks working from the top left to the bottom right. So it's easier for me to try and turn my page around than to try and make a, a mark with this in different direction. Um, I have a massive stash of these blades, I buy them about 100 at a time because they don't last for ages, but when they do get blunt they're not just single use, I sharpen them on a, um, just on a kitchen knife block, I've got it here, um, just a couple of strokes on here, I tend to sharpen the blade enough to do another couple of hours work with it, um, but eventually they kind of wear away and they don't they're not rescuable so then I have to throw them away and start the new one but they last a fairly long time they're not just um they're certainly longer lasting than pencils that's for sure kind of sewing project to share with you in this episode. I'm 
working on a project which is going to be featured in the new issue of the Green Bean Zine when I get there. I um, traditionally, in the original Green Bean, when I made it four or five years ago, it always included a some kind of sewing or craft project and I really want to continue that so this time I've designed a cushion cover which has an applique design on the front and at the moment I'm working on an oyster catcher and there's going to be some pebbles as well which I'm working so the background fabric is pure linen and the applique is wool felt which I'm sewing on just with ordinary sewing thread the kind that I would normally put in the sewing machine I'm using it double to I don't know to make it a little bit easier to handle I guess and um, just sewing the felt pieces on onto the linen using an embroidery hoop to keep some tension on the fabric My plan is that the cushion is going to have this design on the front and on the back it's going to have a colourful oyster catcher fabric which I'm going to design especially for the project and it's going to be like a printed repeating pattern which I'll use on the end papers of the zine as well. And then I'm going to pipe around the edge of the cushion in black that's the plan. Um, it might take me a little while. But I'm really enjoying seeing, you know, seeing this project come to life. And it's nice to do something a little bit different with my hands. I love sewing using the machine, but there's something really slow and meditative about working by hand with the needle, which is how we all learn to sew. I think I remember the very first thing that I sewed was a toy elephant that I made out of felt with blanket stitch which is the stitch I'm using now so nothing's really changed since I was a kid learning to sew it was the same kind of project that I was doing it's just really something simple about that motion of pushing the needle in and out I really find it therapeutic and relaxing What I did first was I designed this pattern on paper, um, just sketched it out very basically with a marker pen and then used that as a template to cut the pieces out of the felt. Um, and I sketched the layout very vaguely on the linen fabric where I wanted to place the pieces. And because they're so small, I'm not really, I'm not using any pins or any glue to hold it in place. I'm just using my hands to hold the felt pieces down as I sew them around. And then once I've stitched the main pieces in felt, I'm adding the details with embroidery. So you can see this um, pebble that I finished at the top has some white stripes on it. All the pebbles are gonna have white stripes of different designs and that's added with embroidery thread afterwards. If you're wondering or worried about what's going on with my newest wool skirt, I have to say that I'm still in a state of dithering about it. I think it's just a factor of it being that expensive fabric that I love so much, I really want to get it right. So I've, since you last saw it, I've sewn the pleats and I've actually attached a waistband and tried it on and it fits beautifully, but I don't know, I'm just not, 100% happy so I'm taking a break from it. What I decided in the end 
rather than sewing several pleats on each side I just sewed one pleat and there's something about it that's giving me a bit of a school uniform vibe which is not a bad thing you know but I don't know it's just not quite right and I I'm thinking about it I'm wondering whether it might resolve it if I just cut it a bit shorter but then that seems like a waste I don't want to cut off any more of that lovely fabric into small pieces that I won't be able to use but then is it also a waste if I make a knee length skirt that isn't going to feel right for me and I'm not going to wear it so I've just set it to one side for a little while while I think about things and decide what's the right thing to do and in the meantime I'm sewing felt oyster catchers and pebbles onto a piece of linen which is working very nicely It was brought to my attention by a viewer who commented on the previous episode that I've been giving a slightly inaccurate reflection of the way that I do my knitting projects. Um, they asked specifically if I was always so monogamous with my projects and I realised that by deciding to just focus on one project in each episode of my podcast that I was giving a very false idea that I only ever have one project on the needles at a time, which is completely untrue. I, um, I've i discovered that my ideal balance of knitting projects is to have two projects on the needles, one of which is a straightforward kind of relaxing TV knitting project that I can take to my knitting group or work on if I'm watching a movie in the evening, and that is something that is usually plain garter stitch or stocking stitch, I can manage a bit of stranded colour work, but nothing with lace, nothing with cables or counting or anything too complicated. But I also sometimes want to spend some time knitting that is a bit more challenging than that and something to get my teeth into. So I like my second project to be something that does involve lace or cables or something a bit more involved. Um, I say that's my ideal to have two projects. Um, the reality is that I am often tempted to drop everything and cast on something new so usually I have three or four sometimes more projects going on but I find the more I have the more overwhelmed I feel by them and I feel like I'm not making any progress so I try to always have two and in reality at the moment I have three the first of which is the row cardigan by Michelle Wong which you saw in the first episode of this podcast which I'm still working on slowly. I have to take cables quite slowly because I struggle with RSI in my hands and I find manipulating the stitches for cables can make my hands hurt so I have to do just a few rows at a time. So that project is creeping along. I'm still working on the back piece and hopefully I'll share it in a podcast episode soon so that you know how I'm getting on with it. The second project is my chocolate stout jumper which I've been sharing in the last couple of episodes and I've been making really good progress with that. I've finished the back and almost finished the second sleeve so I just have the front to do and then obviously blocking it and sewing up the seams which I'm really looking forward to so it shouldn't be too long before I finish that. 
And in the background, the third project I've been working on is this shawl, which I haven't shared on the podcast before because um, it's one of those projects that falls into the category of being a bit more complicated. It's um, a lace shawl and I can't read a chart and talk to a camera at the same time, which is why you haven't seen it so far. This shawl is a pattern called Some Time Alone by the designer Sylvia McFadden and it's from her collection called Gentle Armour which has some really beautiful um, kind of chunky shawl designs in it I guess. This pattern is designed for a worsted weight yarn and I'm using a DK so it's slightly less chunky than intended but I still think it's quite um, quite bulky for a shawl which is what I really wanted. I have a lace weight shawl that I wear a lot but I wanted something with a bit more body to it I guess. Um, and because I'm knitting it in a slightly lighter weight yarn I just did a few extra repeats of the lace pattern before I started the border which is what I'm working on now. It's just a plain garter stitch border for a few more rows and then I'll be binding off with a pico cast off to give it a kind of frilly edge. Um, the yarn I'm using has a bit of a story to it so I'll, I'll tell you about that. It's a Rowan yarn that I've had in my stash for many many years and I have a ridiculous quantity of it because I bought it in a sale when our local haberdashery department in House of Fraser was closing down. They had big bulk bags of various Rowan yarns for very low prices so I stocked up a bit and it's taken me a few years to get through it. Um, but this yarn is its kind of the yarn that got me back into knitting again. I've always, I've always been able to knit. I was taught by my grandma when I was about seven years old and it's something I've done on and off. If I saw a, a pattern for something that I wanted to make, I would give it a go and then I would be able to put it down for two or three years and not think about it. And obviously, I'm not in that place anymore. I knit every day. I can't imagine a day going by without knitting and I try to make all of my own clothes these days, whether it's knitting or sewing. So it's definitely become much more of a lifestyle than it than it used to be for me. And that all started with this yarn, um, which sounds a bit overdramatic, but um, I'm going to try and explain. So when I saw this yarn in the shop, it's from the Rowan British Sheep Breeds range, which is a range that they had a few years ago that is now discontinued. But it was based on, obviously, British Sheep Breeds. And just seeing that on the label set kind of ideas rolling in my head. I had no idea that there were different breeds of sheep. I just thought there were sheep and wool. I didn't understand that there were different different varieties, different textures, you know, it just opened up a whole new world of discovery for me to think that wool wasn't just wool, but also that there was this connection to place and thinking about where the wool came from. I mean, I live in a country where there are sheep everywhere, all around, and, you know, a lot of the wool that is for sale is from Australia or even worse, it, it doesn't say where it comes from. So it was really interesting for me to discover a range that was British and gave me the opportunity to learn about different breeds. Um, what's interesting about this yarn in particular is that it's it has British sheep breeds on the label and then on the back of the label the name of the colour is mid-brown BFL, BFL meaning blue Face Leicester, which is a luster breed of British sheep. Um, I'm sure lots of you have heard of it before. It's a lovely soft, soft breed to work with and quite shiny. And knowing what I know now about sheep breeds, I'm fairly certain that this yarn is not in any way 100% Blue Face Leicester. It may have some Blue Face Leicester in it, but it is, it's, oh, it's obviously matte, it's not shiny. Um, and it, yeah, it just has a different character. It has some drape to it, but it's more of a fluffy, woolly kind of yarn than BFL, which has that kind of really buttery, smoothy texture. So I'm not quite sure what wool it actually is. Um, 
but nonetheless it's it's really important to me and it's been a part of my woolly journey it kind of set me on my way and if I saw it now the way that it's labelled and not being fully sure what breed it is I probably wouldn't choose to buy it but I really like that it has this kind of background for me um, and I when I say I bought a ridiculous quantity I really mean it I have already knitted a cardigan out of this yarn which I've worn for a couple of years and it hasn't if I'm honest it hasn't worn particularly well it's super comfy to wear and I love how it feels it's soft enough to wear next to my skin but it has pilled really badly so I even though I've got lots of this yarn left I'm not gonna make any more garments with it because I think they look a bit um, rough and ready after a few months wear so I decided a shawl was a good way to go because it's nice and soft I can wear this yarn around my neck it'll keep me warm but it won't take too much friction and get too pilled so that's what I'm going for I do still even having almost finished this shawl have quite a lot of this yarn left so maybe I'll knit some of the extra into a blanket or some point or um, maybe a gift for somebody I've really enjoyed this pattern from Sylvia McFadden so maybe I'll make another one as a gift for somebody at some point Today I'm wearing a head-to-toe handmade outfit that I'm really really proud of it represents quite a lot of firsts for me my top is a uh, it's a Japanese crochet pattern although I didn't work it in Japanese it is translated into English called the Serato vest and I made it with Blackie Yarns Leoness which is a blend of 50% wool and 50% linen and I have to say it's one of my favorite yarns to work with um, I've only made crochet projects with it so far um, and I really love the way that it crochets up and it has a lovely drape to it it's really really comfortable to wear um, and I made this garment for the knit along leading up to Edinburgh Yarn Festival with Blacker Yarns and Knit British obviously I wore it at Edinburgh Yarn Festival but I haven't really had a chance to wear it since because it's been cold um, so I'm really enjoying getting it out and starting to get a bit more wear out of it and over the top I'm wearing my handmade dungarees which are far and away my most proud sewing project so far the they are the Turia dungarees designed by Pauline Alice patterns and I had them in my mind to make for ages um, if you know me at all you'll know that I'm definitely somebody who likes to wear dresses and skirts I'm not hugely comfortable in trousers and I did a comic a little while ago which you can find if you go back um, a few months on my Instagram feed I did a comic about why I'm a bit scared of trousers but I thought it's time to face that fear and you know just expand my wardrobe options a bit I love wearing skirts and dresses but sometimes trousers are just more practical and you know to be honest dungarees are really cute and I really wanted to have a pair in my wardrobe so I thought I'd give this pattern a go and I'm just really really pleased with the result I took it really slowly it's a um it's quite a complicated project I definitely wouldn't recommend it if you're new to garment sewing but um, I just took it step by step and I'm really really pleased with the result I didn't have to make too many modifications I had to make a little adjustment to the fit in the crotch to make it more flattering and I didn't particularly like the size of the pockets on the back they were very very small and you know when you heard me talk about my bunny dress that I have strong opinions about pockets and how they need to be functional and not just for decoration so I drafted a new pocket pattern for the back um, but other than that I followed the pattern exactly as it was written and I'm yeah I wear them a lot I'm really really pleased with how they turned out
Thank you so much for tuning in to watch another episode of the Green Bean Podcast. I'm afraid that Jack has abandoned us. He really doesn't like sitting on my lap when I'm wearing dungarees. That's something about the stiff denim fabric that he doesn't like. So he's left me alone up here to chat to you guys. Um, if you want to find us in between now and the next episode, the best place to do so is on Instagram, where I'm Katie Greenbean. I have the same handle on all social media, but Instagram is the only one that I really have time or make time to interact with. So I hope you'll come over and follow me there. I'm going to be going on a bit of an adventure between now and the next episode. I'm really excited to share that my graphic novel, Lighter Than My Shadow, is being translated into Polish. It's the first foreign language edition and I'm going to be going to Poland in a couple of weeks time to launch the Polish edition of my book so hopefully I'll have some of that to share with you on Instagram and hopefully on the podcast as well so I hope you join me for that little adventure I'm really excited about it um, I'm gonna miss Jack obviously but yeah it's just a once in a lifetime opportunity to go and send my book out into the world in a different country and I'm really looking forward to it um, until then, I hope you are having a lovely week and enjoying lots of crafty projects and I will speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.